Hello, my name is Glenn Dyer, and you are watching a Dyer Situation. A very, very special Dyer Situation. Today, I am seeing Dragon Ball Z for Rusido to no F, or Resurrection F, Resurrection of F, Revival of F. Revival of Freeze. I don't even know. They change the name like every five minutes. But uh, this is the 15th Dragon Ball Z movie. Um, made after the huge popularity of uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, Battle of Gods that came out in 2013. Uh, which was amazing. It was great. It was the first Dragon Ball Z movies to be released in theaters in over 10 years. And... Yeah, it was great seeing him. Um, this movie, <laughs> it's been released in, it was released in Japan a while ago. Uh, I'm watching a dubbed version um, that's in a theater, so it counts. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it, um, this this movie has kind of set into motion another part of the show. So there was Dragon Ball, then Dragon Ball Z, then Dragon Ball GT, and now Dragon Ball Super has spawned from this movie, which is really messing up my look back, but I'll get to that at some point. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, very exciting. This is spawning up a new generation. Um, supposedly this one's gonna focus more on fighting, which... Eh, whatever. Um, I personally liked Dragon Ball Battle of Gods most more when they weren't fighting, because that's when all the character was coming out. Um, oh, Alright. If that's, if that's the way they want to go. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that the inconsistencies in this aren't too extreme. Dragon Ball Z movies, I will get to that in the look back, are not always very consistent with the show or manga. Um, just, they, they take liberties, basically, but... You know, they're, they're usually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is just awesome, and uh, that, well, yeah, that I have a great time watching more Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, before the new series starts, and introducing the new form of Super Saiyan, which is Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, which is the stupidest name I've ever heard, but that's what they're calling it, so. It was fine, but not great. Dragon Ball Battle of Gods was great. It revived the series, basically. Uh, after a ten-year hiatus, suddenly we're back in action, baby. Oh yeah, new characters, new story potentials, new everything. Awesome. But... Hmm. To be honest, this reminded me less of Battle of Gods, and a little more of Yo Son Goku and his friends return. Now, Yo Son Goku and his friends return was kind of big at its time, but didn't really go anywhere, it didn't really do anything. And the villain was a joke. Just like in this. Honestly. Frieza's straight man performance was kind of funny, but beyond that, he never, you never really got any kind of feeling of threat from him. Nobody seemed that worried except for, like, some of the side characters. So... Sorry for that. Sorry about that, too. Uh, so, um... Yeah, just, it was basically just a whole string of fights once Frieza's crew landed, although they were really well-made fights, I have to admit. Um, there's, they take on, a, they take on a thousand of Frieza's goons. <laughs> like, this crew of, uh, Krillin, Tien, Gohan, um, um, Ma Master Roshi and, and um, Piccolo, they take on a thousand goons, and, and also one other guy who I'll mention in a second, um, and, 
you know, just a completely ridiculous. Master Roshi is taking on Frieza goons, which is like... No. <laughs> and that was one of the main things that bugged me about this. Kind of like with Yosun Goku and his friend's return, is it? Just the sheer amount of inconsistency is going on here. Um, I... But... Yeah, just... Yeah, that's just one of the main ones there. Like, I guess the manga purists are kind of winning out here, but uh, I still kind of disagree on some of these points. Uh, so basically all the fillers kind of being ignored because Hell looks absolutely nothing like it did in the show. Um, it, you know, now it looks more like a, like a person-specific kind of Hell, like you get your actual hell, like Frieza was in a, a land with flowers and teddy bears and stuff, and it was funny. But, you know, I guess all filler doesn't mean anything now. So, you know, alright. GT is erased, of course. Eh, cool. But, um... <sighs> they took it a little too far in this. <laughs> like, you know, I, manga purists is a thing, and I guess now Dragon Ball Z Kai is the only way to watch Dragon Ball, you know. Whatever, I guess, if that's what Akira wants, but... Jacko the Galactic Patrol Man was a major character in this movie. Now here's the thing, uh, maybe in Japan it's a little different, but I'm kind of a mega fan of Dragon Ball, and... I only barely know of Jacko the Galactic Patrol Man. He's not an anime character, he's from a spin-off manga series. Like his... The Galactic Patrol series that that he did, that no, Makira did. He, but they have him as a main character in this. And it baffles me. Like... You... There's being the manga purist, and then there's just kind of alienating the audience like that by just introducing a character that, if you haven't read the manga, oh well. <laughs> it's just kind of weird, up then. And I really don't know why he was in this. Uh, if they had introduced him or something, like, better than they did, it might have been alright, but no, they... They, he kind of showed up like like we were supposed to know who he was. And maybe all the kids in Japan knew who he was. I knew who he was. And I was kind of disappointed he was in this. Because I'm like, what the fuck is Jacko the Galactic Patrol Man doing here? Nobody's going to know who that guy is. Um, and just many other things like that. Uh, um, the fact that Frieza is any kind of threat at all... Is laughable. Um, because, once again, I'm gonna avoid filler in this, but. <sighs> but, uh, you know. How do I, how do I put it? Uh, Frieza, Frieza's fell thing in this, and I, I actually do like it, is that. He got he gets resurrected, um, in, a, in another way that doesn't quite make sense. They bring him back to life, but he's in pieces because he got hacked up by future trunks, um, and then they like revive him in one of the machines that's been vamped up and all, you know, whatever. So he actually decides to train for four months because he's never trained a day in his life. And you know that is pretty clever. Like that's how he can hype himself up, but. He hyped, him, hyped himself up enough to take on Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku, which thankfully they never actually called it that in the in this dub. Uh, good. Um, that's yeah, that's taking it a little far there. <laughs> um, you know that's just saying that's just overreaching. I think. You, I know it's. I know that Freeze is very iconic and stuff, but we've moved on from him. We moved on a very long time ago, and he's honestly not threatening anymore. In this movie, he was not threatening. 
Like, the entire time Goku was fighting him, Vegeta was right there. And you know he's just as strong as Goku is, so there's not much tension. Um... Same thing with Yosan Goku and his friends return. Trunks and Goten are fighting are fighting these two guys and you know, their parents are just kinda watching like, ah, oh, haha, look at our kids. But there's no tension. There wasn't supposed to be tension, it was just supposed to be good fight scenes, and I guess that's what they were going for here, but uh, this one seemed a little more serious than that, so I don't I don't know for sure that that's what they were going for. So I yeah, it can't hold. It, it feels hollow because of that. I can't honestly love it like I did with Battle of Gods. I'm, I'm glad this is starting the new show, Dragon Ball Super, but I really don't hope that this is the direction it's going. That it's just gonna stay, gonna stay with this whole. Uh, well, yeah, you're gonna advance another level, and then another level, and then another level. To, Honestly, that's what killed GT, by the way. They were just like, I'll raise it up another notch. And, yeah, it just got kind of boring. And I really don't want that to happen with it to this. This is the fresh start. It needs to take a left turn. We need to see something new here, rather than just even stronger enemies. EVEN STRONGER! Yeah. yeah, please. Please. Um... Cause, you know, I love this series. I love doing the look back. I... I hate the fact that now... Um, now when I do mention this movie in the look back, I'm gonna have to kind of point out Jacko, and I'm gonna have to say, oh yeah, he's from the manga, which I already said I'm not gonna do, because, you know, I, otherwise I'd be doing that look back for, like, fucking years, <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, and they also hinted some sort of continuity with the video games, and please, don't even go there, all right? Like I, I do I do like those. I do like the video games. I like Xenoverse. But let's be honest here. All the stuff with trunks and all that, that's a framing device and the re and it's mostly just a compilation of what if stories. I don't want that to be actual canon. Cause that's just silly. <laughs> let's be honest here. Um uh, and uh Yeah. Not all the characters show up in this movie. Not um, Goten and Trunks aren't seen. Um, uh, Mr. Satan's statue is there, but he's never actually seen. Same thing with Boo. There's quite a few characters you don't see. Yamcha as uh, another one, but and that wasn't really what it was about. And I was kind of okay with that. They already got all that fan service out of the way in Battle of Gods, so you know it's all out there. No need to keep on showing everyone off like they're back no need it's all right um yeah one other thing um gohan hasn't been training in a while so that's kind of why they build up the tension because i don't know i know gt doesn't count anymore but in gt he one shots frieza in his final form <laughs> but and, and, he's, and gohan didn't even have to transform for that one but and this, their whole thing is like, oh yeah, Gohan hasn't been training for a while. He can still turn Super Saiyan, though. And, was one, and there was one thing, like, Piccolo was struggling with this guy. Like, like he couldn't beat him. And then Gohan came in and he went, went Super Saiyan for a second and beat him in one punch. I kind of have to call bullshit on that. And as I said, I'm going to try to avoid filler material in this, but... Piccolo, when he merged with Kami, spoilers... He gained, he became really strong, like way stronger than a Super Saiyan. Um, and it didn't look like Gohan transformed to Super Saiyan 2, it looked like this base Super Saiyan, and he hadn't been training in a while. Whereas Piccolo, as you would guess, has is always training. So it doesn't really make sense that Gohan would just easily defeat someone that Piccolo couldn't at this point in time. Um, as you know, Gohan 
He never yeah. achieved Super I Saiyan 3 <laughs> or anything like that, and he's been out of training. He has a, you know, he has a job and everything. Um, oh yeah. Just all those little inconsistencies like that um, just kind of bugged me. Uh, there was one, at one point, uh, at one point, Goku gets shot with a laser, and it actually like hurts him. And that's just silly. He was in Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan mode as well, and yet it actually like shot right through him the laser gun, which. As far as I know, that's impossible. Like, it, it should have just bounced off his skin. And this isn't just, like, filler talking or anything. This is... Remember those times when, like, some bad guy would shoot a blast right at our heroes? Like, right on their face, like, full on in their face like that? And they'd be totally fine? Like, not even a scratch? Well... Are you telling me that laser gun was way more powerful than any of those? Come on. Um, yeah. yeah, just all the little things that makes it so I can't really stand behind this wholeheartedly. I'm still excited for Dragon Ball Super, but I, I honestly hope that this is kind of the lower point of it, and that Dragon Ball Super just gets a little better from here. So, until next time, I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching a Dyer Situation.